Okay, so we know we need to implement the increment read kernel pointer function that uh, allows us to get an arbitrary read primitive, and it's going to rely on the increment write val function that allows us to uh, actually uh, execute um, several increment primitives in order to override the description buffer and length fields uh, for the k resource manager structure, so we can actually build our arbitrary read primitive. And so if we look at where this function is used, so we can see it's used in a couple of places into increment.c. And so the first use is um, in this reset read primitive function, which basically is used at the very end of the exploit when we actually want to reset the buffer and length fields uh, to null and zero respectively. So, so when the K resource manager structure is freed, uh, nothing bad is going to happen because it's not going to try to free a pointer that we crafted with our exploits. And so here the convention is that we pass null to this function. Uh, and so we're going to have to code when we pass null that we want to reset the buffer and the length field of the description field. Then we have some other use of this increment read kernel pointer function inside find eProcess increment primitive. So this is basically using the increment primitive in order to find the eProcess uh, associated with a given PID. So in this case, it would be the system process. And so obviously we need to read eProcess pointers uh, until we find the right one. So yeah, so we read the eProcess and then the PID using this function. And each time we pass PX vars and the address we want to read. And finally, there are a few use as well in the increment system token swap, which allows us to uh, actually swap the our own eProcess with uh, the system process. And so we can see we're reading the our current eProcess for the recovery thread. Then we're calling the function that we've just mentioned. And then we have a few other reads in order to read the system token pointer um, and the count uh, for the system token. And then we're back to the actual implementation of this function. And so before we look at the actual solution for this lab, we know we're going to have to use this increment write val function, which actually chain several increment primitives in order to get an arbitrary write primitive. And so the prototype of this function is it takes the address where there is the value we want to change. And because we use an increment, it's actually having two arguments, old value and new value. So we're going to basically increment from the old value to the new value. So we need to track what previous value was uh, at the specific address that we want to change from the old value to the new value. And then there is the length. So typically for a pointer, it would be eight bytes in 64 bit or for a length field, it could be four bytes or similar. So now let's have a look at the actual solution for this function. So basically we know uh, we're going to use the last read address and last length value to track what are the current uh, values for the description buffer and the description length fields in the kernel. So we know we can uh, increment them from the last value to the new value, and then we just update the last value. Um, we know we leave the k resource manager address, so we can actually uh, get the address where the buffer pointer is stored, uh, as well as the length uh, field is stored. So this is the this is the two fields we're going to have to change, like the addresses of the two fields in the kernel. And so we use our write primitive, our increment based uh, arbitrary write primitive to basically change both the the buff right address and the length right address. So we have a few specific cases to deal with. So the first case is when we when it's actually the the one we will use last, but we we handle it first because we're gonna have to return and we won't do much in this case. But basically, we said the convention is if we pass a read address of null, like we it's a convention. It means we have to reset 
the buffer and length fields. So in this case, we just call increment write val saying, okay, we want to change the buffer fields. So we specify the buffer write address and we say change it from the last address we used, which we previously stored and change it back to null. And it's going to be size of eight, eight bytes uh, in 64 bits. And then we do the same thing for the length field. So we specify the address in the kernel where the length field is. And then we'll basically uh, change it to zero and specifying that the previous value was a last length value. And in this case, we specify um, uh, the, the actual size. And then we just reset. Uh, well, we just, sorry, we just update the two values for the buffer and the length field that we tracked because we've just changed them to null and zero respectively. So then we handle the, sp the first case where we're going to actually reuse our arbitrary read primitive. And so we know initially that the buffer is going to be set to null, but and the length field is going to be set to zero because our read primitive, our arbitrary read primitive, assumes that we know the original values. So originally we know they are set to zero and no respectively. And so, and so if that's the case, uh, uh, if the length, last length value is set to zero, it means the, it's the first time we actually do an arbitrary read primitive. So what we do is we actually set that length to um, eight bytes. So, so from now on, um, this length field is set to eight. Uh, we change it from zero to eight and we update the uh, tracking uh, variable um, for the length field to be eight bytes. And so now we are in the general case. So in the general case, the length field has already been set or it was set from um, this if condition previously, or it was set from a, this if condition, but from a previous read. And so if we're trying to read an arbitrary address, we just uh, say that uh, if you want to do that, we call the uh, wrapper for the increment write val again, but specifying that we want to change it from the last read address to the read address. Um, the new one that uh, we want to actually read. And again, it's going to be a, a pointer, so size eight. And we update the global variable to say, okay, now the last read address is actually this read address uh, that we've just read. And finally, uh, we want the buffer field and the length field of the description uh, field of the key resource manager are set as we've just done. We can actually call the leak resource manager description to call the, the syscall to actually uh, read the description field. And it's going to actually return what is pointed in, in the kernel by the buffer field that we have just changed. And so, yeah, just calling this syscall will just uh, retrieve arbitrary data from the kernel. So this is what we get here. And because we said that the syscall will actually uh, need to acquire the K resource managers mutex before it can actually copy the description field back to us, um, we need to use the uh, set notifiable um, thread. And so what we do is we set the set notifiable enlistment, well, the enlistment that needs to be spanned uh, for the notifiable flag. We set it to the current trap enlistment because we know that the is going to basically unblock the recovery thread and makes it uh, go into a certain path that's going to basically uh, unlock the K resource manager mutex. So we set this, the current spam notifiable enlistment. Then we set the event to say, okay, now, uh, please, uh, the set notifiable thread start spamming the notifiable flag. And, and then we can call our function. And when it returns, it means, um, it worked. Uh, we, our, our syscall uh, managed to acquire the mutex and return from Uze to Uzeland. And so now we can just stop uh, spamming the notifiable flag um, in the set notifiable thread. And that's, that's basically it. We can return the leaked data to the caller um, and this function um, is done now. So I have pushed the increment export lab after building it from the debugger VM and I'm going to run it. And so it's initializing all the KTM objects and then it's going to start uh, trying to win the race. So we see that it took 25 hex attempts and, and, and in, a, in two different attempts. So we detected we win the race. 
and you can see it's actually slower than the uh, previous mode uh, based exploits. And we got system. So here is another example of running the exploit. Uh, so we see that it took up to 56 uh, enlistments uh, over two attempts to actually uh, win the race condition. And then we had to parse the processes from uh, the e-process structure that we leaked from our recovery thread. And so we see that we had to parse uh, one e-process, two e-process, and then we found the system process. And finally, we were able to locate the system token structure and we got the system shell. So here I want to rerun the exploits, but this time using a process explorer to see um, information about the exploit running. So let's see what happens. And I'm just going to look at the properties for the, the process running. Ah, so as you can see, it looks like it actually crashed, like the VM is not responding anymore. And it's an interesting scenario because as you can see, the exploit managed to win the race condition, leak the case thread and K resource manager addresses. Then it started to uh, go over all the e-process structures and it located the system e-process. It found the associated token for the system process. And then it was basically going to replace our own e-process uh, token with the system token. Um, but because it's actually incrementing the pointer and possibly when I'm using Process Explorer, I'm actually doing user land operation that potentially would actually try to read uh, my current e-process token. Potentially it's going to actually dereference um, an invalid pointer because the increment operations that we do to go from the uh, my, my current token pointer to the actual system token pointer uh, won't be atomic, and, and so it's going to take some time. And so we had a debugger attached, so I'm just going to analyze what happened and where it crashed. A few moments later. So what we can see is that it actually crashed into one of the functions in the kernel called SC security attribute present. So it looks like it was actually trying to check if a security attribute was present into a specific um, a pointer. And then here there is a, it's trying to deference a, a null pointer. And so if we click here, and look at the backtrace. Uh, we see that indeed it was due to Process Explorer uh, trying to uh, get uh, process information and then trying to um, read a security attribute. And so, yeah, I mean, we can't really do anything about this uh, problem and it's really a limitation of the increment primitive with the exploit. So it's a matter of making it as quick as possible. And if we actually control the target where we run the exploit, making sure uh, we reduce the likelihood of any process trying to read uh, the pointer we are trying to change. So I hope you like this lab and see you in a future video or future training. Thank you for watching.